On this YouTube channel, we explored some of the true greats on the platform. All of these YouTubers have their own strengths, but only one is the master of ideas. Dave Rubin, YouTube's political stepdad. The man who saved the center of American politics and the man who invented what is now known as classical liberalism has had a storied and challenging journey to the top, but much of his life and the insight it gives us into the mind of the man are unbeknownst to most of his fans, friends, and even family. Dave Rubin is known to you all as a man of politics, philosophy, ideas, and so much more. The creator of the internationally recognized YouTube show, The Rubin Report, may come off as a clean-cut all-American intellectual powerhouse, but Dave Rubin and the show that bears his name represent so much more than what can be seen on the surface. Starting out his career as a writer for the television personality John Leibowitz. More than I did? Sure. Uh, I do not associate with Bruh. Rubin later moved to the hallowed art of stand-up comedy. Rubin was known as one of the greatest comedians of the post-9-11 era of LA comedy, drawing massive crowds and commanding huge laughs. You're all looking at me like, okay, we can, we're ready, we're ready for comedy. <laughs> we'll do some comedic things, all right. It wasn't to last though. For reasons unknown, Dave Rubin left the world of stand-up. Perhaps some of the other comedians were jealous of his immense talent and forced him out. It's off the grid already. Yeah. I was uh, in the fruit section. I was buying a melon, actually. <laughs> I do enjoy a little watermelon in the, in the summer months. It gets hot here. Or perhaps the audience couldn't take his high-level ideas that required IQs above 150 to truly comprehend. It is come on. She is the worst. She is the worst. She is the worst. I mean, she is the worst. Do you she is the worst. Do you think? It's so gross. And it did, you know, look, she's the worst. She's the worst kind of authoritarian. Yeah. Like, she's the worst. Luckily for Ruben, he had another thing going for him. Joining the internet politics show, The Young Turks, as the token queer, Ruben began doing what people would know him for, discussing complicated, nuanced ideas. Well, yeah, hey, Sue, that... you bring the oil, <laughs> I'll bring the victory. I'm so confused. <laughs> what what are they pulling on down there? Uh, you know what I mean? They're, they're pulling on something. I'm pretty sure something. it's the sphincter. It's the sphincter? They, do, they hook and then they pull. The Young Turks are known for having taken their name from a radical group that helped commit the Armenian Genocide. This is a sly joke that TYT founder Sink Uger inserted just for the fans and a dog whistle, so to speak. A brilliant technique that young Ruben would pick up on and use later in his career. I, I don't, I, look, I am not for white supremacy or neo-Nazism, but the alt-right is amazing. The Young Turks paved a path through the internet, even growing Ruben his own show, The Ruben Report, which would continue for many years oh, internet, later. My name is Dave Ruben. I am the newest host here on the Young Turks Network. We're doing a show called The Ruben Report, and uh, that is it. So subscribe and laugh. And, uh, okay, now back to your porn. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for upstart Ruben at the Young Turks. He recognized early on that he was meant for better things and demanded more money from Sink and Sink's Armenian war bride, Anna Kasparian. The Young Turks, he wanted to make a six-figure salary to host a 30-minute a week show when everyone here, you know, because we work for an independent news company, was getting paid far less while working 12-hour days. That's why Dave Rubin left the company. Yes, it was time for Dave Rubin to leave and do what he loved. And what Rubin really loved was ideas. It took churning of ideas for thousands of years. I like talking about ideas. Uh, I like talking about ideas. An idea revolution. The right ideas and the good ideas. 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 I like talking about ideas. Ruben loved to take in ideas. We took the brain of a 25-year-old black man and the brain of a 25-year-old white man. What is it that they're doing that... No, different sizes. Yeah. yeah. It didn't matter where the idea came from, as long as it was an idea. Even though Jesus probably would have been would have okay loved with gay about, people right. Muslims and Muslims. Well, he was right. around a lot of Muslims. It was the Middle East. And, uh... Ruben had a thirst for it. He would take ideas from any source, from any political affiliation. Conservatives, religious conservatives, black conservatives, gay conservatives, trans conservatives. People who ostensibly aren't conservatives but realize that's where the money is. There was truly no person 
or idea too dangerous. Preferably big ideas. The bigger, the better. Sometimes he would take in multiple big ideas at once. Sometimes even the ideas would be coming from multiple different people. Sometimes the ideas would be so big and powerful that they would hurt Ruben's brain. I have to say that my brain is still in recovery mode from taking in so many high-level important ideas. In doing this, Ruben was simply emulating his friend and mentor Larry King, a man who taught Dave never to challenge his guests or give your own opinion. Samsung makes it. I saw. I visited that company in Korea. Yeah. Samsung makes. And it's ringing right now. <laughs> it is. Oh shit! You Hello. <laughs> Hey, Cannon, where are you? Well, I'm doing David Rubin's podcast now. I'm on his show, and while talking to you, the audience is watching me talk to you. Dave Rubin during this time also helped to unite and develop a band of critical thinkers and risk takers that became known as the intellectual dark web. Guys, I got a Peterson, I got a Shapiro, I got a Weinstein, I got a Rubin. This group of some of the smartest people of our time included Ben Shapiro and Steven Crowder, true intellectuals for the modern age. But despite surrounding himself with the smartest of the smart, Dave Rubin is actually quite stupid. One of the things we consistently talk about here at the Rubin Report is why it's important to judge people as individuals and not as a collective. The crazy lefties that are running the show right now, the Antifa, Bernie, coalition of Marxist lunatics. Rubin himself has no discernible skills and isn't particularly good at anything. Uh, why did I get back in? This is exactly why I got back in. Rather, his entire career and the show he hosts is based entirely on parasitically flaunting the status and intelligence of his much more intellectually impressive guests, creating the illusion of personal intelligence radiating from Rubin himself. In an ironically genius stroke, this proves the message that he propagates, suggesting that hard work and skilled labor lead to lifelong prosperity and happiness. It's all becoming too obvious to everyone. Yes, yeah. Showing that truly anyone can be rich and famous. Building on his belief in trickle-down economics, Dave Rubin created something called trickle-down grifting. But there are many people in my circle, friends and colleagues and podcast guests, who are making the opposite error. Making his grift to be one of allowing grifters to have a larger platform, which allowed other grifters to make a career of criticizing him. In the case of Dave Rubin, for example, that he's hearing, you know, the uh, cheers of a bunch of people who are all concentrated in one mindset, and he thinks that what he's saying is making sense, and in fact, it seems to be making less sense over time as he's. Oh shit, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Our dad taught us not to be ashamed of our high level important ideas. Mm. Sometimes I rip the skin. Well, my dad taught me a few things too, like uh, how not to rip the skin by using some of those. Will you show me? I'd be right happy. As a young fan of Dave Rubin, his ideas gave me so much power. Every week, you'd be hit with new ideas. Sometimes the ideas would be too powerful and you wouldn't want any more, but they'd just keep coming, whether you consented or not. Prolonged exposure to Rubin could increase the size of your brain twofold. Sometimes the ideas would be too big and high level for my tight little gamer brain, and I'd plead, no Dave, they're too big. 
he'd make sure I got them nonetheless. These ideas would come into use throughout my life as I watched Reuben and owned my family and classmates in top-tier conversations. I remember one time when a black girl in my sociology class said that she believed that everybody deserved health care. <laughs> I told her that she isn't factoring the fact that blacks commit 50% of the murders while only being 13% of the population. She asked what that had to do with anything. I asked her why she was allowed to say that word and I wasn't. She didn't know how to respond because she hadn't been watching Dave Rubin. She was thoroughly owned. That's the power of ideas. With all his friends having abandoned him, and his hero Donald Trump ousted from the White House, I am left to wonder, has he simply run out of ideas? Has he simply taken in too many powerful high-level ideas from geniuses like Ben Shapiro, losing his ability to make ideas of his own? In this, I think there is a lesson to be learned for all of us. Not to take in too many girthy, thick ideas from others, but to instead play with and enjoy our own ideas, even if they are, in comparison, small and low level. Essentially, to be true to ourselves, and not to lash on to other people's ideas, but to create your own. And that's why I've chosen to follow more thoughtful, independent political voices on Twitter. Now I get my political views from the one, the only, DJ Kill Keemstar. Strong. 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 Strong.